Today we have the end of season number nine. If you didn't see yesterday's video, you're going to want to go watch it today. It's episode 69. Let's hope it's nice. Let's run the intro. <sighs> There's a big game coming right up. And in fact, you know, it's a big episode today because I've taken time during the intro to raise the standing desk. I am ready for action. I am ready to take on Manchester United at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final. Now, worth noting, Manchester United currently 8th in the Premier League, not having the best of seasons. Their pre-season prediction was 5th. Look at this recent form. It's been a bit patchy, to say the very least. But I think the important thing to note here is they've been playing so much football to start the month of April. They're in the Europa League knockout rounds. Of course, they've got the FA Cup semi-finals against us. They're still very much in a battle in the Premier League where they're trying to chase down Everton in 6th. I'm going to hope they've taken their eye off the ball they're a little bit distracted. Maybe they'll just disrespect and underrate a little old rugby team. Worth noting, actually, Manchester United in this save game have struggled a lot. They finished fourth a couple of years ago, but that was their first time finishing there in what is now, what, eight seasons. Yeah, they've not been particularly good. And bizarrely, Eric Ten Hag has been their manager for the last nine years. Manchester United in this universe have just kind of accepted mediocrity. Kind of surprised he's lasted that long, to be honest. Now, of course, last episode we had our youth intake. We did wrap up promotion. And since then, we have confirmed the league title. Um, I did try to shadow play record the cup lifting thing because I got caught out when it happened. It didn't properly record. So you just have to imagine the trophy lift. That was too much, wasn't it? Now, since last episode, I've played six league games. I've been rotating the team a lot. We beat Birmingham 1-0, Sunderland 3-0, a draw against Lincoln City. This was a bit disastrous. Lincoln City have just been relegated. But we did follow that up with two good wins against Oxford and Hull City. Most recently, a team we lost to earlier in the year, Wrexham, held us to a draw. That said, we did play a fully rotated team for this game. Nice to see, if nothing else, Wesley Gomez, the man we picked up in January, getting the Man of the Match award. And well, here is your official confirmation that we are indeed champions. Luton Town also guaranteed to be promoted. We have broken the record for most points in a championship season, most wins in a championship season, most goals in a championship season, and there's still two games left to maybe add to all three of those. Not entirely surprising, the board are absolutely delighted. Promotion to the Premier League is guaranteed. Worth noting... The stadium's a problem. So right now, Butlin Road, our current ground, holds 2,000 seated fans and has a total capacity of 5,240. Yet over 3,000 people stand up to watch our games with no roof and uh, no undersoil heating. And unfortunately, as it says conveniently hidden behind my face, editing Jack, remove my face for a moment. Uh, the stadium requirements for the Premier League involve having a capacity of 5,000, at least 5,000 seats, and undersoil heating. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the plan is for next year. I don't know if we'll move grounds, build a new ground, uh, just upgrade ours in one summer. Uh, they, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Here's the answer. We'll find out together this summer. So in terms of the plan for today's episode, we're going to do this FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United. It's going to be a tricky game. If we were to win it, we'd play against the winner of the other semi-final, which is Liverpool. As much as I want to dream of going on an FA Cup run, it's going to be bloody hard to win the whole thing. It's also worth noting that finishing runner-up in the FA Cup no longer gets you the European spot if the current winners of the competition are already in Europe. Instead, it goes to the Premier League team which feels a bit unfair. A few years ago, just winning this game would have been enough to get into, well, the Europa League. N not anymore. And of course, after this match, if we lose, we're just going to get to the end of the season. If we win, FA Cup final. Everyone's a winner. And yeah, ultimately, we are going to be wrapping up season number nine today. In terms of the team news, I have fully rested up the players. I rotated the team against Wrexham. I did bring on a couple of the big guns in the second half, but to be honest, they are very, very rested. And when you look at the team, here it all is. In Goma, by the way, he signed a new deal. I know, there's people crying now. Tears of joy are being shed around the world at this news. £37,000. He's the highest earner. He's been on an amateur contract for the entire save game. £1,000 a week for a very, very long time. He's now contracted for the next four years on a lot more money. 
but we can afford this. We're now a Premier League team. Anyway, donning the captain's armband, we are going to hope that N'Goma is ready and raring to go and hopefully guide us towards, well, a, a, a cup final at Wembley. Uh, let's be honest, it'd be absolutely insane if we could go far in this competition. You might remember at the end of last episode, Luton, who are currently second behind us, were playing Manchester United in the quarterfinal. That game was being played after everyone else's. Luton only lost 1-0. The team directly behind us in the league only succumbed to a narrow defeat. I'm looking at this team wondering, are they playing a rotated team? Uh, I don't think it's fully rotated, if indeed it's rotated at all. It, it's a very, very good uh, team. Uh, yeah, they've got a 34-year-old Marcus Rashford on the wing. They're taking this seriously, Manchester United. Uh, this is a kickoff highlight, which should probably fill me with some dread as Gasperi does that. Gasperi's been with us since League One. He's been such a vile part of the team. That's the first howler I can remember him ever doing. What a time to do it, though. 30-something seconds into this game. Gasperi, anywhere, mate. Anywhere but there. And it's a fine defensive header. Uh... Well, we've got a mountain to climb. Last episode, we did dispatch of two Premier League teams. Of course, we scored in both those games inside the first five minutes. That has not happened today, and instead we find ourselves in unfamiliar territory against a very, very strong Manchester United team who are well, presumably going to be looking to take the game to us. Of course, we've got a young team, perhaps somewhat inexperienced in these big, important matches. This is untrodden ground for us, and right now we find ourselves on the back foot. Mason Mount through the middle, acres of space. Makes it two. There was a fairy tale ending to this season that could have happened this episode. Doesn't feel like it's going to happen right now. Manchester United switched the play nicely here, and then really, I mean, the seas just opened, didn't they? Jao Victor Gasperi again, just nowhere near where he needed to be. And Mason Mount was never going to miss that. If you are wondering, Jack, how does Mason Mount look in this save game? Uh, yeah, very bloody good. Especially compared to our players, he's still a decent footballer. But is he any match for N'Goma? I think not. Back post header, Michael Bolton, take a bow. It's 2-1. We might not be out of it just yet. I discussed this a little bit last episode. Michael Bolton, NDIA, our kind of two fullbacks, have both got 17 jumping reach. They are absolute weapons. And alongside Gasperi, there is plenty of big boys to aim for. We don't have the biggest attack with Ospina and Rojas, but when we get the big guns lugged forward for set pieces, we do cause teams issues. We've done it again here. And suddenly the gap's back at one point or one goal rather, and I have some hope. Kinski with the ball, lays it out to Jerdanak. Of course, with players and their important matches a tribute, it doesn't actually show up if they're good or bad at important matches till they turn, I think it's 22 in Football Manager. So many of our players are below that age. I have no idea if our team is full of big game players or not. We might be about to find out in this game here. Jao Victor, that was ambitious. 20 minutes played here. I'll say it now. We are not being outclassed. In Goma, he already has one assist from a set piece. The big boys are forward. Can we find one of them? Short to NDIA on this occasion. The left back on the right wing plays it to Ospina, who really just has to hit the target there. Given the fact that Manchester United are playing a full strength team here, I really don't feel like we're doing ourselves any kind of injustice. There is, what, eight minutes left of this first half. It's still a one-goal game. You could argue we've created a little bit more than them. Possession's been lacking, but these set pieces are causing issues. It's a looping header that sails just over. Every time we get the ball into the box, we look dangerous. Sadly, that danger is not going to amount to anything to end this first half. 2-1 to Manchester United. I'm going to have a chat with the players. What was that? Get your act together. Kinski and goal is to motivated. Can I, can I cheer him up? Uh, you have the ability to make a difference today. Look at that. He's motivated now. If we win and he makes a save, it's all because of this team talk. Ospina is not having the best of games. If I had one criticism of our current squad, I don't feel like our backup striking options are all that exciting. In fact, if I'm going to make a change here, and I think I'm going to make one early on, I'm going to bring in Raul Bellardo to play at attacking midfielder on attack. I feel like this is a role he does really well for us. And then Sam Fay, I'm going to move into the advanced forward role to put on the left-hand side. He has an okay left foot, uh, especially compared to Rojas who's the most one-footed player in the universe. You might have spotted it as well there. Sam Fay has made an international appearance for Scotland since last episode. Yeah, the 18-year-old playing for the national team, doing his nation proud, yet to get his first goal. But uh, yeah, definitely deserves that. Manchester United there on the attack. Rashford, little give and go, one-on-one, -on -one, and it's 3-1. Uh, Sifi Dien, French name, man. De Dequenoy, that's definitely not how it said. He scored. 
I realise I've just assumed he's French. It looks French, doesn't it? It, it? it just looks French. Rashford plays the ball in behind. Little give and go. Bolton, bit slow. Defence, all out of shape. Keeper couldn't come to the rescue. I have just checked. Uh, can confirm. French, also very good physicals. In fact, he's, he's just very good, isn't he? He's, he's just mad. Annoyingly good. Okay, Manchester United 3-1 up. Feels like it's come somewhat against the run of play, although they have got a much higher XG than ourselves. Uh, this is where I wish I had some really big, exciting subs to bring on, and this is maybe where we're lacking in these kind of big games. We have Zito, who's an okay backup striker, but's never really proven himself. I feel like there's definitely room in our team to bring in maybe one super exciting attacker. That said, you know, we're capable of scoring goals. We've already got one here, but defensively... We've been a shambles in this game. It's 4-1. And you know what? The reality is sinking in. We are a team who are currently top of the championship. We're not a team capable of beating a Manchester United team in an FA Cup semi-final. Never mind a Liverpool team who I believe are top of the Premier League in a FA Cup final following this. Yeah, the dream of European football has died. I do feel like we've got a little unlucky in this game. When you look at the stats, when you look at how it's played out, we've not had a great deal of the ball, to be fair. Manchester United have really stepped up in this half. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like we've been completely disrespectful in terms of our showing in this game. Rojas is frustrated and having a bad game. I'm just going to bring in Zitto to see what he can do. Zitto, by the way, keeps asking uh, to leave the club. He's had loads of those interviews with the press, you know, where he reveals in an interview he wants to leave. Desperate to sell this guy. There's got to be people watching an FA Cup semi-final. Let's put him in the shop window for 15 minutes. I mean, if he puts in a man-of-the-match performance here and we take it to extra time and it's 4-4, maybe I'll reconsider things. But I think at this point we have to accept this game is very much done. It's just a case of uh, can we show any signs of life late on? The answer to that is no. It's 5-1. We won two games yesterday against Premier League opposition. I felt optimistic about this. I shouldn't have. Stop. Stop. We are already dead. Uh, you're not going to get an easier chance than that. The youngster shows no composure. We nearly made it 5-2. We should have made it 5-2. It could now be 6-1. Although, that's a great tackle. Bellardo, get the ball forward. Look at this. We've got so many players in the attack. There's a free on two if we get it forward quickly. Can Bellardo, the racing youngster, make something magical happen? Ball's put in. Zito scored. He's offside. I don't even think it was he who was offside. I think it was Faye who was offside, but... He was interfering with play. I'll tell you now, Sam Faye probably having the worst performance he's ever had for us. He's on a 6.0 rating. I don't have a sub to take him off. The good news is this game is done. It's going to finish 5-1 and Kinski was awful. Uh, we weren't good enough, were we? Uh, I think what we've learned there is might need a new goalkeeper for next year. Youthful rugby town come unstuck. Yeah, we, we definitely did. We were a bit embarrassed there, weren't we, really? I mean, silver lining, we get £500,000 and presumably some of the attendance money as well. Uh, the other flip side to all of that is that we are now heading into the Premier League. A few years ago, £500,000 was like club changing and life saving. Uh, right here and now, it's a bit of a drop in the ocean, really. Anyway, we have got two league games left of the season. I'm not going to bother doing them on camera. There is absolutely no significance to them whatsoever. Instead, I'm going to get to the end of the season, going to do a little end of season wrap up, a little bit of a historical look at the save game, look at stuff like the overall best 11, some of the records, some of the stuff I've not really shown so far. I do feel like with Park to Prem save games, uh, kind of get into the Premier League for the first time is kind of the end of chapter one almost, and you kind of enter a new age. That said, unlike previous years, when I look at our current team, when I look at some of the, the talent we've been able to attract and develop honestly there's a fair few players here who i think can definitely do a job for us in the premier league and we won't need to replace so unlike perhaps previous parts of prems where you see a big rebuild at this point i'm looking at some of the names towards the top here thinking champions league players give them a year or two or four uh, and they could definitely be doing the job for us anyway i'm gonna get to the end of season awardy bits if there's any news regarding the stadium it will insert it right here don't go anywhere future jack Take it away. No stadium news just yet, but we have got the end of season kind of emails coming in, including this. Are we going to be the team with the smallest amount of season ticket holders ever to play in the Premier League? Apparently, we have 1,688. Uh, yeah, it, it's not great, is it, <laughs> in terms of turnout? I have to imagine that now we're in the Premier League, all the glory supporters are going to come out of the word work. Uh, we were selling out this year, but our ground... Only holds 5,000 people, so it's not much of an achievement. Unsurprisingly, the board very happy, of course, with the season just gone. Aim for next year, 
avoid relegation and then just establish ourselves as a Premier League team. Uh, have noticed here, my contract's up in two years. Probably will ask for a new one. End of season meeting. I'm just going to tell the players that we're going to stay up. I'm confident we can avoid relegation. Everyone is happy. I'm happy. I'm not making any promises. Have a lovely holiday, lads. Uh, KO day. Not happy. Only person to be negative alongside Stromberg. Stromberg, I've already stood by you. This is backstabby. Training camp next year. We can go to Spain, Portugal, the West Midlands, or a whole load of other places. You know what? I think we've earned a trip to the Algarve. Let's go on a golf holiday. Now, you might remember our transfer budget sat at, I think it was like £28 million. It doesn't sit at that anymore. I've spent some money. £12 million still left in transfer budget. Uh, we will, I assume, be doing some wheeling and dealing in the summer. But I did decide to sign Lee Min. £14.5 million to this guy. We had the option to sign him as part of our loan deal from Tottenham. Uh, I think he is a really, really good backup left back. He's a wonder kid left back. That's his media description. 20 years old. Bags of potential. Um, whilst maybe a left back back up to NDIA wasn't exactly the top priority. I feel like he can offer some really good competition here. Uh, we needed a backup left back anyway. And I just feel like for £14 million, this represents insane value for money. Great mentals, great physicals. And uh, yeah, well, you could argue it's an overpay for a backup. There's a pretty good chance that down the line, should NDIA force a move, Lee Min will be needed. He is really capable of stepping up. And not that it matters a great deal, but if we just go to the season preview for the championship, I think it's quite telling that he is in the media dream 11. Alongside, to be fair, NDIA, Bolton, Ngoma, and Ospina. I'm a bit annoyed that Rojas isn't here. I feel like Roger's been done dirty. Am I mad thinking that Ospina isn't as good as Roger Rojas? Uh... I mean, when you look at these comparisons, I'd say I'm not that mad at all. Roger is clear. Justice for Roger. Uh, Rojas, that is. The two people being called Rogers really is annoying. Anyway, I need to mash continue some more to get to all the award ceremony bits. Sometimes once you've had the previous set of emails, you hit continue once more and stuff happens. The board have announced plans to build a new stadium. That'll be good clickbait for the thumbnail, won't it? Oh my god, new stadium. Uh, yeah, we are going to be moving away from Butlin Road. It's going to take a while for us to get there. Uh, the board have scrapped some expansion plans and announced that we're installing under soil heating. Two million pounds. Two months. Uh, at least we'll have heating under the pitch. I don't think we've had a single game postponed over the years. This is probably overdue, however. Also, work permit application for Noppert submitted. Uh, if you're wondering, who is this bloke? He is going to be our new under-21 manager. At least that's the hope. He should get a work permit. Our under-21s, by the way, are into the PDL Championship uh, final. They've just beaten West Brom. Uh, our current manager of this team, which if I just find real quick, here he is, Mark Robbins. Uh, he's announced he's retiring at the end of the year. So hopefully we can do it for Robbins and then Noppert's going to come in and take over the reins. I am hoping with our promotion to the Premier League, our under-21s are going to start playing in the under-21 kind of 21 Premier League league as opposed to the leagues we play in now. Just that higher standard of football would be good for kind of under-21 development. Just looking at things here, when I come to the new facility screen, apparently we're looking for a site for our stadium. The plan capacity is 14,000. I feel like that's going to be way too small in a few years' time. Hopefully, by the time we find a site, that is recalibrated slightly. Football Manager does tend to do that. I have no idea if we can play at Butlin Road next year, given the fact it has no undersoil heating, although that's being built. I feel like the lack of seats is a problem. Imagine if we install undersoil heating and then still have to move grounds anyway. Okay, so we are currently playing through the off-season, waiting for the playoffs to end. That's when we get the end-of-season meeting bit. In the meantime, though, I am getting a few little bits of transfer stuff done. Uh, Junya Takahashi here may well be joining us to be a backup striker. 23 years old, Japanese international. Looks like a really good player of a similar mould to the two Rogers, truth be told. But when I was doing some squad planning, and yeah, I've actually been using the squad planner. I know, shock horror. Um, but yeah, when we've been reviewing the striking area. Of course, we've got Roger Ospina, we've got Roger Rojas. Sam Fey is kind of a backup, and then Zito is the next best striker. I don't think Zito's good enough. I feel like his lack of pace is really going to hold him back, especially in our system. Takahashi is a player who I think is an upgrade. If we're going to move on Zito, Takahashi's a great pickup, especially because we've had a bid of just £1.8 million accepted for him. To sign this guy for less than £2 million would be a really good deal. Has some experience too, which I think could be useful. And if you were wondering, it is Sunderland v QPR. That game is played tomorrow in the Championship Playoff Final. It'd be very on brand, wouldn't it? 
with QPR get promoted. They've been a pain in my ass throughout this save game. They're not a pain in the ass for next year. Sunderland beat QPR on penalties. Let's have a look at the match report for this one. And uh, in fact, <laughs> you can see here, Queensport Rangers missed all three penalties in the shootout. That is... That's kind of disastrous, isn't it? Given the fact that I didn't actually show the table after the Manchester United game, here is how the table finished, if you were wondering. Of course, ourselves and Luton automatically promoted. Bournemouth bottled the playoffs, as did Wrexham. They were right up there for an extended period this year. Uh, but in the end, it was Sunderland who snuck in right at the death, who ended up getting promoted elsewhere. League One, just for people wondering. You can see here Swansea and Stockport County promoted. Rotherham won via the playoffs. And over in League Two, if we just look at things here, Torquay uh, managed to get into the top three. Isaac Warren, our goalkeeper, played in goal for them on the regular to end the year. Was a bit concerned he wasn't playing enough. They started playing him. Played really well for them. Might try and loan him back to them and see if they want to play him at regularly in League One. That would be a pretty good loan move. As for our affiliates, Chester, uh, they went from, I think, from 19th to 19th after we gave them a load of players. Crucially, they weren't relegated. And for those wondering about the Premier League, here is how the Premier League table finished. Interesting to note here, Leeds United relegated. That's a little bit of a surprise, I feel like. And elsewhere, Blackburn Rovers also relegated. Of the newly promoted teams last year, the only team that went down was West Brom. Oh, and uh, Manchester City won the league. I mentioned earlier the fact that Liverpool were top. Look how the table looked, by the way, on the final day. The top four teams separated by two points. And if you're wondering about past positions, look how much it changed on the last day of the year. Uh, yeah, Liverpool did bottle it. They were top for an extended run at the end. Last game of the season, they drew 1-1 to Blackburn and finished fourth. Yeah, as a Liverpool fan, that kind of sucks. Right, now that the playoffs are done, and I've, I've figured out how Football Manager works, everyone, we've cracked the code. We are now officially at the end of the season for the end of season review, which means if we click here, we can have a look through things. First and foremost, I think it goes without saying, players that we signed this year ended up being really monumental upgrades. In the striking area, we brought in two strikers in Roger Ospina, who got 22 league goals. And of course, alongside him, Roger Rojas, who got 17 league goals. Between these two players, I think we've got two Premier League quality strikers, both the kind of south side of 20 as well. Players with loads of room and hopefully time to develop. I look at Roger Rojas especially, looking at his potential and how good he is. He could be a cracking little player. Elsewhere, of course, Miyazawa chipped in with a whole host of really good performances. Second half of the season, he did become more of a reliable squad option. But given his ability to play right back, to play defensive mid, even to play centre back in case of emergency, he is going to be just a super useful player to have for the foreseeable future. Of course, Bolton joined us uh, and started playing at right back. He is now getting more and more to grips with that position. You can see here, looking at his ratings in the league, they weren't exactly the most emphatic, although in cup competitions, he chipped in with three assists uh, oh sorry no not in three assists three goals and one assist in the FA Cup keen to see him really nail down the right back position but I love him a lot uh, I do feel like 28 million pounds was a lot of money I look at his value now and think money well spent probably also worth acknowledging with our promotion confirmed and now the end of the season approaching loads of our player values have suddenly jumped up of course it's just how football manager works um yeah suddenly a whole host of our players are worth a load of money which might mean that we get more significant bids that we have to consider over this summer in terms of players sold this year i suppose the most notable is toby hines we sold him to brentford he then after a very short period of premier league football went on loan to league one where he got one goal in 11 in games for Portsmouth. Yeah, he's not looking like a great signing for Brentford right now. Of course, we sold Colke for £10 million to Nice. He has not had a great time either in League 1. Two goals in nine games. His valuation has dropped significantly compared to when we first sold him. And in fact, across the board, when you look at players we sold, there's lots of players here that we let go that really have not had a good time. Annoyingly, when you sort by value, it doesn't actually sort by value. Xenia, of course, sold to Southampton, made four appearances on off the bench. The football manager transfer AI has had an absolute howler there. Not surprising, really. An A-plus from the board for the end-of-season results. I feel like we deserve that at the very least. 113 points, smashing the record. Of course, the FA Cup didn't quite go to plan today. 
did a, a defeat against Manchester United put an end to what was, up until that point, a really good impressive run. And as for the Carabao Cup, knocked out on penalties by Newcastle. From a financial point of view, things are on the up. This is going to look radically different next year with us being in the Premier League. Our reputation is still only at two and a half stars. That might still update when the season officially ticks over come June. Um, obviously, right now, we don't have the best of reps. But we are at a point where at least we can attract players from abroad. Here is the team of the year as well. You can see here, look at the double figure goal scorers across the board for goals and assists, to be fair. What a season it's been. A sea of green ratings and of the, the players here, Sam Fay leading, I was going to say leading the way with ratings, actually, NDIA is beating him by 0 0.05. But for me, Sam Fay, my player of the year. He scored some massive goals in massive games. I feel like just in live commentaries, you saw him really take games by the scruff of the neck and get us all important goals. A little bit concerned that there's some interest in him. Barcelona, apparently you want him. He's not for sale, of course. When we get promoted officially, his contract extension will get triggered. In fact, it's already been extended. You can see here his contract now expires in 2038. I think I must have missed the inbox item. I'm not sure when the inbox item happened. I'm looking for contract extensions after promotion kicking in. But if we just look at players sorted by contract date, you'll note here that all our really, really good players, or at least a whole host of them, have contracts now expiring in six to seven years' time. Yeah, I really did make the most of locking in our best players on long-term deals by using the, the kind of contract clause that when we get promoted, we add three years onto their deal. Suddenly, Roger Rojas and Ospina are here for seven years. The future, I mean, it looks bloody bright, doesn't it? I'm very excited. NDIA did pick up Fans Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year. Ospina won Signing of the Year. Highest transfer fee paid. The only record we've broken. £28 million to Michael Bolton. Maintain it's going to be a great deal long term. What I will say is I don't think we're going to be spending £28 million this summer. Not unless we make a massive sale from nowhere. Didn't realise this. Sam Fay, NDIA and Roger Rojas were in the next-gen list. Uh, were they in the top three? They weren't. I, I missed this inbox item when it happened. I couldn't tell you where they finished. We'll just make up. They finished fourth, fifth and sixth. You can't argue with it. I was wondering if it said anything in the biography about where they finished in the rankings. It, do it doesn't. I was wondering if there was a way to look at the overall next-gen list, but it seems like you can only just look at the top three, which is a bit of a shame if you're like me and you miss the inbox item. Here, by the way, is the overall best 11. Uh, yeah, are there familiar faces in here? I mean, N'Goma's in there, Sam Faye's made the starting 11. A-hole Chuddy, he's still technically at the club. His contract does expire in the summer. I think we're going to be releasing him for a second time. Uh, safe to say when we signed him in League One, it was a bit unnecessary. If you're wondering about Callum Goldsmith, by the way, he is still playing in Germany. He's not really been playing for Borussia much in Gladbach. In fact, this year just gone, not played a game. Miles Maycock's contract's expiring at the end of the year from Salford. Of course, he was the first real great player we ever had. When you look at him now, almost a little bit underwhelming. There is a small temptation to sign him, I'll be honest. I feel like I've got to resist it, though. And if you're wondering about Ricky D, he is still at Bristol City. He made 11 appearances this year. For £9 million, they got an average rating of 6.56. I'll tell you what, the more you look at the players that we've sold, the more it looks like I've just scammed other teams, doesn't it? I know for a fact some people are going to ask about Norman Hamilton. Uh, played four games in League One for Rotherham. Of course, we sold him for £400,000 to them a few years ago. He has not developed one bit in the last few years. And if you want the full rundown of where are they now, uh, pause the video right here. Take a look through this list. You can see where all the different players in that overall best 11 are. Um, I will just look at Sam Kelly. Uh, he plays for Gloucester City. There's one person who I know is a big Sam Kelly fan. This one's for you. Here's a little overview of our manager profile as well. 3,099 days not out at Rugby Town. Of course, the career has lasted a little bit longer than that in terms of total game time because we started unemployed. Um, a whole host of interesting stats here. I think the most notable... 69% win percentage. Nice. Here is our job history as well, up through the years. Last year, we didn't get many Manager of the Month awards. This time around, though, we did get a lot more. And of course, that one competition win the championship. Imagine if there'd been an FA Cup next to that. In terms of the club history, here it is in all its glory. Of course, we joined the team back in the 2023-24 season. In the last nine years, we have had seven promotions, which is not too shabby. Season 10 is going to be our first in the big time. I feel like it's actually quite nice that we've won as many leagues as we have. Sometimes when you get promoted, you don't get to collect all the trophies. We've collected every single football league title, which is cool. Here is a little overview of our landmarks as well as we've climbed up through the leagues. A lot has changed over the many, many years. One thing that's not changed is 
we still have a chairman called Brian. Of course, Mansbridge looked like he might be moving on from the club at one point last year. Never materialised. I bet he's glad he didn't sell up now. Uh, and if we do just look at, is it records I'm looking for? Indeed it is. We can see here all our overall records. My favourite thing about all of this is most league goals by a player is held by David Kolodinsky. David is still at the club as a scout. And actually, he's a pretty blooming good scout as well. Over on the record screen, you can see how attendances have climbed up through the years. Really, the FA Cup coming up clutch a lot during the, the lower league years. In terms of biggest wins and biggest results, the 8-0 win we had against Sheffield United is the joint biggest win during our leadership campaign. I think it's our biggest league result as well, because you can see here the 9-1 and other 8-0 that we had came in cup competitions. I do find some of these screens funny just looking at how the spend that we've had at the club has climbed up through the years. Guerrero, once upon a time, our record transfer, now still playing for Crystal Palace. Nine goals in the Premier League for him. Part of me would love to bring him back. Part of me knows that that valuation is going to make it somewhat difficult, and he's still contracted for another four years. I did just spot as well, looking through the top goal-scoring list, of course, the likes of Soonsup Bell, who is asking to leave Oxford after they just didn't play him this year, just gone. And also, Ferrarinson. Remember Ferrarinson? Uh, he got seven goals this year in Scotland, zero the year before that. Somehow selling him for £100,000 seems like a good bit of business in hindsight. Of course, there are a whole load of other records on this screen here, some of which I'm probably not acknowledging. Feel free to look through them at your own leisure. Of course, we have now got a very big summer ahead of us, and on Monday, we are going to start the summer with a little bit of a squad rundown and also the start of a two-part transfer special. I was thinking about doing the squad rundown in this video. It's already a little on the longer side, and in order to get this video up for you guys to see on Friday, I, I need to stop now. There's a lot to edit, and I'm up against a deadline because... Uh, I've not planned things well. I'll be honest. I digress. It's still been a rather long video today, and I very much hope you have enjoyed it. Shame that the FA Cup dream couldn't really play out as I perhaps imagined. Let me know who your player of the series is down in the comments so far. Where in the start 11 should I be strengthening going into next year? Would love to know all your thoughts down below. I'll leave things today with a little look at this screen here, where I've kind of plotted out our squad for the coming year. We're already somewhat addressing the striking area. Do you feel like some depth at centre-back might be needed? Take things easy. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. I will see you guys on Monday for more. And until then, it is me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.